a child born in 1953. The structure of DNA has just been discovered. 1989, and this baby's genetic fingerprint can be identified. The first single gene for Huntingdon's disease has been discovered. 2003, this child's entire genetic code can now be read and 40 genes in his DNA can be adjusted. Another birth, but this time no ordinary miracle. The baby's sex and eye color were decided before she was conceived. Also her hair, the shape of her nose, and her intelligence. The date of her birth? Perhaps only a few years from now. She's born of a revolution in genetics, a revolution where each new step brings new questions of ethics and responsibility. And as the promise of the science gets greater, so the questions for all of us get bigger. The 26th of December, 2002, a press conference in the USA. I'm very, very pleased to announce that the ba first baby clone uh, is born. This claim by a religious cult, the Raelians, is almost certainly a hoax. But a cloned baby is the very real aim of some scientists around the world. It's the ultimate goal in a science where some fear the pace of development may be outstripping our ability to examine, consider, and weigh up their consequences. There are 72,000 experiments going on in the world today dealing with DNA. 72,000 experiments, and we've just begun. What we're doing is we're short-circuiting millions of years of trial and error and speeding up the process of gene transfer in a short moment. So I believe, rationally, I would have to say and go on record, I think it's insane. Insane or not, it's the amazing idea that we can manipulate and control our genetic inheritance that drives modern medicine as it attempts to outwit the major diseases caused by our genes. When it comes to medical research, any medical technology that works is very quickly accepted by the public. Ethicists may not like it, but scientists may not like it, but the public, if they believe it works, will accept it. And legislation will always follow. Ethics has always followed science. It's never led it. And I don't see any reason why genetics is going to be any different. Ethicists would love to tell geneticists what to do, but I'm afraid the geneticists aren't going to listen. As the debate rages on, this program will take you to the frontiers of genetic research. It's a place where scientists admit that often they don't know why their experiments work, but where there's no doubt that genetic medicine is showing extraordinary promise. In the future, we're hoping we can inject stem cells into a patient, and those stem cells will repair worn-out body parts. I think uh, cloning is probably the most powerful technology that humans ever develop. Our hope is that the work that we and other scientists are doing will one day result in consigning genetic diseases to the history book. To find out what the public thinks about the developments that are revolutionizing our genetic future, Discovery commissioned a unique international poll across eight countries. Our poll found that many people share the overwhelming optimism of scientists that genetics will decide the future of the human race. Most support was found in Brazil, least in the UK and US, but even here, two out of five people agree. As we go on, I think it'll eventually, you know, um, really influence our medicine and the way we treat people. I think there's a lot of hype involved in it, and, you know, there are other things that are gonna probably do more to form what's going on than just the uh, genetics. Much is promised by genetic science, the manipulation of our genes, but can it deliver? And if it does, are we ready to take on the responsibility of meddling with the very fabric of life itself, our DNA? 